if there are any animal lovers out there and you like fragrances, chances are you're gonna love this fragrance house. What's going on everybody? It's Eli with Common Sense and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we are going to be covering one of the most fun fragrance houses that I've taken a look at in quite a long time. So stick around, make yourself comfortable, and let's start the video. going on everyone thank you so much for joining me and today we're going to be looking at a fragrance house none other than the house of zoologist so zoologist is a canadian fragrance brand i believe it came out in 2013 and they are one of the most creative fragrance brands that i've taken a look at in a long time so what i love about this brand is they love animals they really do their research and they look into the habitats the habits and also just the types of foods and stuff that they eat and i believe as they said they take a look at the idiosyncrasies and the small little things that make the animals what they are. And so they try to turn all of that and bottle it into a scent. Another thing that I really like about these fragrances is that a lot of them are very animalistic. I know, shocking. <laughs> but they do it in a really cool way and a lot of them are surprisingly wearable for ethical reasons, of course. They don't use the real materials derived from the animals. Uh, deer musk and also civet, those tended to be a little bit questionable, especially Especially on how they harvested them and for ethical reasons they don't do any of that and so today we're gonna to be looking at eight of those fragrances I own a full bottle of one this one is squid and we're gonna be taking a look at that one first so squid is currently the only fragrance that I have the full bottle presentation of so the presentation is actually quite nice it has this nice hard kind of case it has a little bit of a leather feel on the outside and it opens up and reveals this really really unique fragrance bottle so one thing I really love about this fragrance is that it it manages to stay very aquatic, but it's also very warm and sweet. So it's also got quite a bit of an inky quality to it, of course, because it's a squid. And I love the kind of dark bluish aqua juice in here because it really does reflect that blue marine inkiness while also having a nice sweet and warm kind of solar accord to it. So this definitely has quite a bit of a peppery woods, especially up top. And it's definitely got a nice woody, wet aquatic tone to it. So it smells mineral. It also has some sort of earthy tinctures to it, but man, I gotta say it kind of reminds me a little bit of a sugar cookie or like an oatmeal cookie. So it's got a little bit of that warm, sweet gourmand touch to it, but it does it in a really aquatic way. And I think it's just really, really interesting. I think the benzoin definitely helps give it a sweet vanillic tone to it. So it gives it a little bit of a warmth. And I feel like there's also some cardamom in here as well. So it smells very warm. It's very comforting. And I think it's something that's definitely a unique niche fragrance. Oh, that's really Really cool especially from that saltiness and the ambergris that is just that is insane. Not to mention this stuff lasts a really, really long time. On my skin, I get about 12 hours and it goes super, super strong, especially when you first wear it. And all of these fragrances tend to last around the eight to 12 hour mark, depending on you know where you spray it and how much you spray it. For squid, I gotta give this one a good seven out of 10. There's only a few situations that I would wear this. It's not really suitable for the super hot season. So when it's a little bit cooler, I think you can definitely pull this one off. But I think a seven out of 10 is definitely worth it for squid. So if you want something that's sweet, salty, aquatic, and a little bit strange, I think you're really gonna like this one. And that one is Zoologist Squid. Next up, we're checking out Koala. Just look at this distinguished gentleman on here. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Look at the way he is sitting. Yes, very distinguished. Mm-hmm, I see. I gotta say, on all of these fragrances, I love the little animal kind of anthro characters that they have on here. They're just really cool. And I don't know, I, I just like their designs. You really can't help but smile when you check them out. So in the opening, I am getting a blast of eucalyptus and also some peppery greens in here. So of course the koala eats eucalyptus leaves primarily. And it's also got a little bit of a medicinal honey vibe. So it's got a little bit of a sweetness. It's got a very strong herbaceous green tone to it. And it also has some black tea in the heart. So you're going to have a nice spice and a nice incense as well. So I think as this one dries down too, it definitely becomes a lot more incense heavy. And and it smells like kind of a sandalwood hippie like fragrance and so this is definitely something if you like those kind of retro 70s fragrances or just if you're a sort of kindred spirit and you like that sort of hippie vibe i think you're gonna love this one so again it's very laid back it's going to kind of share the same qualities of a koala you know if you're really chill you want to just munch on some green that sounds really weird <laughs> but i think you'll like this one 
It's also got quite a bit of musk and amber in the base to kind of help it make it smell a little bit salty. And I think it still just remains a little bit sweet. And it really is just an interesting, sweet candied eucalyptus. I really just love how woody and green this stuff smells. And it really is just calming and it has that aromatherapeutic quality to it. So it really does make you relax. And it just smells really soapy and really, really enjoyable with a touch of that sweet kind of saltiness. They really did an amazing job with this. If I had to give it a score, I'd probably give this one a good eight out of 10. This is really nice. Next up, we're checking out Snowy Owl. Just look at that cool coat. Dang, wish I had that. Oh God, it just fell out. Don't drop your samples, folks. Huh. So I think they absolutely nailed it with the naming of this one because it has a very cold, a very green quality to it. So it has a snow accord that they listed and it also has some mint. So it definitely smells a little bit herbal and it smells very, very cold and it has a little bit of a soil tincture to it. So it also has some iris and snowdrop in here. So I think that definitely adds to the green kind of aquatic nature of this, but my goodness, this smells really, really unique. And I haven't smelled something quite white is, I'm trying to figure out, because it almost smells like petrichor. It almost smells like when it's raining outside and you have that wet earth, wet asphalt. That's exactly what I get out of this one. It just kind of reminds me of being in the snowfall. So that's, that's really cool how they did that. I'm not quite sure how they did that. It's really cool because it has a slight sweetness to it, but it is very slight when I say slight. And it also has quite a bit of musk in here. So it's a little bit salty and it also has some wood in here, some oak moss. So you're definitely gonna have that forest vibe and it just smells very woody and very wet. So like a wet driftwood. So in the dry down, it definitely becomes slightly more resinous. And I feel like it almost has a little bit of a rubber touch to it. So it also has some civet in here, like I said, not real civet. It just has a little bit of that funky cat-like animalistic quality to it. So I think that's really interesting. And especially because they have the tonka and the vanilla, I think it mellows out and it becomes a little bit more mass pleasing and you lose a little bit of that kind of wet earth touch to it. But I think it still smells absolutely heavenly. And for this one, I have to give it a 7.75. In terms of uniqueness, I think this is a nine or a 10. It's definitely something that captures that wet for accord but if I wear this out and about people would probably just assume that I smelled like the outdoors so I don't know that's not a bad thing but I'd probably have to give this one a 7.75 and that one is snowy owl next up we're taking a look at penguin so love this dude's little top hat this guy's got so much swagger oh that is animalistic so in this one, Zoologist is saying that they use an ice accord and they also have an Antarctic air accord. So they're really creative with their aroma chemicals and these accords that they're creating, these kind of fantasy notes. Juniper berries, Antarctic air, and ice accord are some of the three that are in the opening here. And I'm definitely picking up on the marine like salty air. So it's very cold and it definitely does remind me of the ice and the Antarctic sort of climates and areas that these penguins will live in. It's also got a really interesting smokiness to it as well and so that could be from some of the saffron and maybe the suede but to me I get a smoked wood so it smells a little bit tobacco like and it's just a salty smoky wood and it's really really cool also has a little bit of edge from the pink pepper and also the sandalwood but it's very very strong especially in the opening but again it's very salty it sort of punches at your nose and it's a little bit animalistic without being too overwhelming whereas a lot of fragrances they start off extremely strong and they mellow out. I feel like this is the opposite where it becomes even more salty and some of that suede definitely comes out. So it does smell like a cold smoky wood, almost like you're sitting at a campfire in the Antarctic. This one really does strike my fancy, especially in the dry down because it smells like that beautiful salty kind of marine like smoky woods. And I would honestly rock the heck out of this. So if you like that marine smell with a little bit of that suede, I think you're gonna love this one. And in terms of the score, I'm gonna give this one a solid nine out of 10. Yeah, I really like this stuff. Nine out of 10 for Penguin. Our next fragrance is Harvest Mouse. So this is an interesting one. It's got quite a blast of sweetness in the opening, but it also has a little bit of a beer quality to it. And I do see here that they do have beer extract CO2, some rose and some hay. So I definitely see what they're doing with the sort of wheat fields and the harvest mouse. I think that's really cool. The way that the rose and the divana kind of play, it gives it a little bit of a smoky kind of jammy rose quality, and it gives it a little bit of a kind of feminine edge to it. And there's also some clove 
clove and some other things that make it smell almost like a cannabis body oil. I don't know if you've ever used like a salve or something with CBD in it. So it reminds me a little bit of that. And that's kind of a cool vibe. Also has some chamomile and some orange blossom in here. So this kind of reminds me of a sunset and it's very picturesque. And as they sort of show in this picture, I can totally see a dapper harvest mouse just kind of running around in the <laughs> fields. It's also got a little bit of a dusty quality to it. So it smells a little bit earthy and it's still got some of that sweetness. So it's really, really unique here. And I got to give it to them. Their creations are extremely creative and they just smell extremely, extremely unique. So in the dry down, that kind of beer accord does kick up a little bit and it smells a little bit more rich and boozy. So you have some vanilla and some benzoin in here, as well as some other really creative kind of spicy resinous notes. Just a really nice vanillic resinous touch combined with the boozy kind of beer and whiskey quality in the dry down. So I think this one's really cool. And the rose is still pretty dang strong in the dry down. So I have to say that if you like the sweet, smoky rose kind of boozy fragrances, I think you might like this one. So this one and squid are probably some of the strongest that I've smelled so far. So you may only want to do a couple sprays with this one, but I have to give this one a good eight out of 10. Yeah, a solid eight out of 10 for Harvest Mouse. Next up, we're checking out Camel. So this one really did pique my interest because I love Middle Eastern fragrances. I love spicy kind of oody fragrances. And this one, it definitely did not disappoint. Oh, this one might be my favorite so far. In the opening, you have a very strong dried fruit accord and it just smells like dried peaches, apricots, and maybe some plum or something like that. So it reminds me a little bit of Angel Share by, by Killian and maybe Carlisle or Herod. So some of those beautiful Davana rose and kind of smoky Tonka fragrances. So it's definitely got a rich boozy quality to it and it has a little bit of frankincense and you also have some orange blossoms. So it's definitely going to be a little bit medicinal, a little bit peachy from the jasmine and the dried fruits. This definitely reminds me of fall and winter because it just reminds me of Christmas. It's got that smoky wood. You also have some tobacco. It's got that boozy, warm, familiar accord to it that definitely makes you feel like you're at a family dinner, a family gathering. You're pouring out, you know, your nice whiskey, your nice booze, and you also have that really nice, familiar and comforting just spice from the cinnamon, maybe some cloves and some really, really nice jasmine in here. Oh my God, that dry down gets even better. So in the dry down, it definitely becomes a little bit more animalistic. You have some more of that civet and you also have some tonka and vanilla. So it definitely kicks up a little bit in the sweetness and the intensity. So I think this stuff definitely doesn't die down. If anything, it gets better as it dries down and it gets even stronger. Like there is just the right amount of animalistic touch in here. It smells a little bit barnyard-like, but in a really, really good way. I think this one is a 10 out of 10. Zoologist, you have outdone on yourself with camel. I'm gonna buy a full bottle of this for sure. God, that is amazing. Our second to last fragrance is Chipmunk. So this one is really, really trippy because it's very smoky. It's got a little bit of that green. <laughs> that one is strong. It's peppery. You're definitely getting a lot of pink pepper and some strong kind of nutty hazelnut qualities to this. This has a very distinct smoky wood in here. So it reminds me a little bit of the smoked incense from Interlude from Emoage. So it kind of has that same green oregano, salty, smoky, woody quality to it with a little bit of oud in here. And it also has some Gaiac wood and some other animalistic notes that definitely do play up on that sort of chipmunk nutty kind of animalistic tone. There is a little bit of warmth in the opening and it smells a little bit fruity because there is a little bit of red mandarin in here and the cardamom definitely gives it quite a bit of that comforting warmth and a little bit of that sweet vanillic spice. And as it sort of settles down and dries down, you definitely get more of an earthy, woody accord. So you have some oak absolute, you also have some cedar wood and some gayak wood. So they're using a ton of woods in this fragrance and it definitely does reflect that. Yeah, just nutty and comforting. In the base, it definitely smooths out a lot more. You get a lot more of the Gayak wood, some of that sandalwood, and it just smells very smooth and a lot more comforting. So almost like the opening was the stress of a chipmunk trying to find their, you know, their nuts and their food. And then at the end, when it finally dries down, it reminds me of them just chilling in their little holes with their dinner that they got. Everything's okay for that day. And it starts again the next day. That's kind of what I get out of this one. In the dry down, it does still remind me of interlude, maybe interlude 
Iris, that version, I think it kind of reminds me of that one a little bit more, but it's still very unique, but it just reminds me of certain aspects of that one. So this one I definitely describe as something very salty, woody, and just comforting at the same time with a little bit of that nutty touch to it. I'd have to give this one a 7.75 as well. And that one is Chipmunk and I saved the most unique one for last. Our last one is Hyrax. Just look at this dude, how happy he is. Like you just can't help but smile when you see these guys. So with Hyrax, I feel like this could be the most divisive. I think you're either going to love this or you're going to hate it. So this one is the most animalistic out of all of them that I have smelled and it's the most funky but I really, really dig it. You've got a really intense waxy quality from the LMI and the pink pepper in the opening. And as it starts to kind of settle down, you get a little bit more rose and some sort of stone accord as well. So it smells animalistic and it reminds me of the Middle East. It's also got some amber and benzoin and some whiskey as well. I actually handed a sample of this to my brother and he said it smelled like Jack Daniels or like a shot of something. And I'm like, that's a really good point because you have that whiskey Whiskey note. Gotta give him a round of applause for that. Picking up whiskey. That's kind of cool. Man, there's also a castorium note in here that is very strong. So it's going to smell almost sweaty and very salty. So like an animal that's just kind of been out there, it's very musky and it's it can be intense, but I think the way that the resins and the whiskey combine with the kind of sweetness and the rose in the opening, I think it's definitely very unique. And I think if you like some animalistic Middle Eastern fragrances, I think you're gonna like this one. But I do have to say in the dry down, it ramps up the animalistic vibes for sure. As it dries down, it also introduces some civet in here. So it definitely has that oody animalistic fecal quality to it, but I feel like they pulled it off though. This is not going to be something that's, you know, beginner friendly. This is maybe for the more experienced person or somebody who's more daring and they really just want something that's powerful, it's raw, it's animalistic, and either people are gonna love it or they're gonna hate it. But I really, really like this one because it stinks in a good way. I know that sounds really weird and kind of freaky, but it really does. It stinks in a cool way. It stinks. Nice and good. So if you want something that's very strong, musky, animalistic, boozy, then I think you're gonna like this one, but definitely be prepared for those people to turn their nose up at you and say, who smells like a farm side? Because it, it just does. <laughs> so for Hyrax, I gotta give this one a nine and a half out of 10. So after checking out all these fragrances, I still think Penguin, that one is at our nine out of 10. I really do enjoy the salty, smoky, marine-like quality of this one. Again, I think it smells like you're kind of cooking over a campfire in the Arctic Ocean. You know, you have the smoky burning kind of fish in there, but you also have some of that really nice warmth and some of that sweet kind of salty sea air. So I think this one is really, really unique. And then for Hyrax, that one got a nine and a half out of 10. Again, it smells extremely animalistic and a little bit fecal-like, but I think it just smells really cool. If you want something intense, very sweet, spicy, oody, and very Middle Eastern smelling with a touch of a just animalistic kind of wet dog muskiness, you know, maybe you're crazy like me and you might like this one. And at the number one spot, we have Camel. I think there is just something irresistible about the fruits and the boozy quality to this. Again, and it smells like a very high quality niche fragrance, just like it is. And I can't believe that you can pick these up for under $200. I definitely get comforted. It just reminds me of the fall and the winter and just a nice smoky, resinous, fruity quality to it. So I think this one is definitely by far the best. So while I just talked about eight of them today, there are tons more. So definitely check out the brand and get yourself some decants and these samples because these are some of the most creative and interesting fragrances that I've smelled in a really long time. And man, I gotta just get a full bottle of a lot of these. Maybe maybe a couple of them, because, you know, try not to go too crazy with the collection. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these fragrances or if you have any other favorite Zoologist fragrances. So put them down there. I'd love to talk about them with you. That wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have an amazing week and just stay safe out there. And just remember, you guys are awesome. I've been Eli with Common Sense and until the next time, bye-bye. If there are any out, oop. <laughs> what the hell was that? If there are, yeah.